fine. Now, obviously, the or already this element has got ID. You can also write by dot ID. Fine. Now, suppose you have you are on this website. I go to in dot radio dot com again. And suppose there is a sign in link. This is the sign in link. Now this sign in link is having anchor tag A, but it's not having any ID. But I'll get the path like this. That means any element on the page with the ID sign in info. Under that element, we have an anchor tag A. So basically, this is a span. This is a span with the ID sign in info. Under that, you have the anchor tag A. So you get an path like this. If you look at the path of this field, the first news over here. Okay, the first news out here. If you look at the X path, then it becomes like this. There is an element on the page with the ID news div one. And if you look at the page, then yeah, you get relative elements out here. Okay, this is the division with the ID news div one. So you to make the X path accurate, you can write like this. There is a division with the ID news div one. Under that there is again one division. Under that there is again one division. This is the division. Fine. Under that there is a H4 tag and then there is an anchor tag. So under that this is the H4 tag. There are multiple H4 tags under this. One, two, three, four, five H4 tags. I want to go in the first H4 tag. That's why it is H4 one over here. And under that, there's anchor tag A. Fine. So this is the way. This is actually the way you can make your X path, or you can find X path in Mozilla. Fine. Now many people have been asking me questions. How do I find my X path in Chrome and I? Well, you have to go to the page source and make them yourself in Chrome and I. But what I do is I investigate and I find the XPath in Mozilla and use them in Chrome and I. Because there is no FirePath in Chrome and I. If the application opens in the same way as it opens in Mozilla, it opens in the same way in I and Chrome. You use it. You find the XPath in uh, Firefox and use them in Chrome and I. But what if you have an application which never works on Firefox? You have got some websites which only work on I. In practical enterprise applications and all in the, in companies, I have automated many websites which only work on I. And in I, you cannot get the X path like this. So in that case, you have to go into the page source, find the object, and make the X path yourself. So we will be covering this topic as well. That is, how will we be forming the X path ourselves? We will be doing that. How to make your own custom XPath. Now basically, you draw right now you remember two things. You just know two things. One is the complete XPath, which is very accurate. But the problem is that if the application changes, then the XPath will change. But the partial XPath is more stable. Fine. And you can get it through FirePath. Now how do I find the XPath and how do I use the elements over here? Okay. Yeah, there is a syntax to write the XPath. If you are using, yes, Priya, there is a syntax. The question being asked is, is there a syntax to write the XPath? Yes. Then if you are using complete XPath, it should start with the HTML tag. If you are using the partial XPath, then you have to write double slash first. Then you have to give the tag name. You got and give whatever property and slash slash after that whatever you have to give then again the tag name and the property whatever you have to do basically partial x path starts with slash and then the tag name it double slash fine now if i go to my this example gmail.com Right. Now if I try to use XPaths over here, I write that I want to find the email by the XPath. Or I want to find the text <coughs> written out here. Then this is the XPath. Okay? So you can write over here web element. Text equals to driver dot find element. 
by the x path you give the x path in this case i am getting the full x path because there is no id and all nothing on this page so i am getting full x path and you write over here system dot i got this element right gmail is built on the idea that email can be more intuitive so now if i write over here system dot out dot print ln text text is the web element if i write text dot you will got get lot of functions one of the function is they get the text that means get the text of this web element if you run this code this will print the text of that particular web element okay right question is x path you captured today are getting changed after 6 months and how do you handle this we handle this in a framework okay when i teach you about frameworks we will actually make a properties file fine for example i was just teaching frameworks in one of the modules over here one of the co batches over here i was teaching framework hold on look this is a very this is a question which is which will be answered not in coming few days but in the last lectures because need to know complete thing for example uh, this is the framework which i was teaching in one of the batches so what we do is that we keep the x path at a common location we keep the identifiers in a common location something like object repository in qtp and we read them from this common location so if anything changes tomorrow we change in this file this makes the maintenance of the code very easy we will do all, all this thing right don't worry fine now out here if the co another question being asked is by priya getting x path can be tricky depending on scenarios it cannot be tricky you just have to use firebug and get it out only thing with it only when it becomes a tricky is a scenario where you have to form it yourself you don't have to use firebug and you have to form x path yourself okay right now in this code over here i am writing two lines for one web element you can actually get rid of this you can instead of writing like this you can write everything in one line that is driver dot find the element by the name email fine in the end dot send keys hello okay and again driver dot instead of find writing in two lines by the L, by the id password dot send to this so what happens is that execution starts from left side it first finds the web element object this highlighted portion will be executed first it will give you the web element and from that web element it send to the password so instead of writing two lines you can actually finish the work in just one line okay i would have by the id this dot click fine so so far we have seen what are the various html objects right in coming lectures i will be covering all the html objects their mandatory and the attribute and all everything mandatory attributes optional attributes and all everything i'll be also talking about javascript which is again very important in selenium right and fine i will also cover today i'll start covering the framework like uh, test ng or the j unit framework fine i want to take up test ng because uh, you know personally i feel test ng okay we'll take up test ng later on but personally i feel that test ng is a better framework than j unit if you look at selenium grid then selenium grid it helps you to execute test cases parallelly and most of the documentation you will find on net on selenium grid is on test ng framework Okay, uh, hold on. There is one more question being asked: How to maximize the browser in Selenium? For that, the command is yeah path. You can ask driver dot manage dot window 
dot maximize this will maximize the window okay this part you can ask the question okay fine now if i want to execute the same code on say chrome okay all you need to do is that like yesterday i talked about setting the system property in chrome you can set the system property instead of initializing web driver with firefox driver we will initialize it with chrome to chrome driver and What's the problem? I'm not sure. When you import Chrome driver, and if you run this, this will also work on Chrome. Hold on, I'm getting an exception. Illegal state exception. Oh yes, I formatted my machine. That's why. Hold on. I kept the Chrome driver at some other location. I kept it at this location. If you look at this, it goes right username and password, and in the end, it has also maximized the browser. Actually, the command to maximize the browser, I had given it in the end. That's why. If you give it out here, it will maximize the browser in the very beginning. Now, suppose you have a scenario. If you look at this thing, this object is changing continuously on the page. This is a kind of dynamic object. How do I identify this? Right? If you look at this object in out here in Firebug, it's got this X path. So whenever I write like this, I'll not click on this. If I write driver dot find element by the X path of that particular object dot get text this will give me the current value of that object if i write system dot out dot print and x this will give you so even if the object is changing on the web page i can refer it by its x path and i, I can actually get the latest value of that object if i run this code then this will go to gmail and it will actually extract the first value for out here if you look at the output this is the value which came up when suddenly you actually extracted Okay, I just try to write a code which prints the first 10 values of this, the first 10 changed values. What you need to do is that you need to write a script when you go back, just try this, write a script which prints the first 10 changed values on the page. Just this is simple logic, nothing else. I've given you the Selenium code, you just have to apply your brains to write the logic. There's no more Selenium involved. Fine. Okay, so far so good, fine, we have talked about X paths, we have talked about F8 key is not working for Chrome. Question being asked by Shraddha is F8 key is not working. Well, on, then you can right click and select inspect element, this kind of thing will come up. Okay. Right click on the element and select inspect element. Otherwise on my system F8 is working. Sorry F12, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I did a mistake. F12 is the key in IL Chrome. Sorry. I actually made a mistake out here. Okay. Something else was going in my mind. Right. Now, 
Uh, we have seen X paths. We have seen how to identify objects with them. Fine. And I have talked about the X paths as well. You can install Firebird. You can get X path. Right. So anybody having any questions till this point of time? Anybody having any type of question regarding Selenium, regarding anything? Okay. Yeah. So suppose I want to run this script in all the browsers, you know, different different browsers. Yeah. Like uh, three browsers or four browsers. Is there a way to do that in one script? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. For that, we use the testing frameworks like test ng or j unit. Whatever you have to use, you can use and you can parameterize your data and you can run it. I'm going to talk about that in the course. I will definitely talk about that. Okay. Now, suppose if the question being asked is if we have multiple login page and 20 or more different username and password, then how we can check on different browsers? Look, the thing is, look, don't try to jump, right? Although this is a trial try class, forget about that. This is the common mistake which most people do. How think of how will I execute on multiple browsers? How will I report results? How will I make HTML reports? How will I do that? This look, I will come over to all these topics. Okay, but the only thing is we have to go systematically. If you learn web driver, you first learn the features of web driver. That is how do you identify objects? How do you uh, actually extract the objects, you work with them, what are interfaces in it, what are the classes. If you know the technical insights of that, then after that you can work on uh, the browsers and all very easily. For example, um, Shraddha and Priya will answer your question just a minute. For example, the simple question, the answer to your question lies in the framework itself. Okay, so if you If you go to, if I talk about this thing, yes, you can use the maximum command for all the browsers. If you look at this, then in this framework, I have got this test cases file. And this is what the answer to your question is. We'll be keeping the data like this. For example, this is these are the test cases: search test, login test, register test. Okay, run mode represents that whether I need to run the search test or suppose now let's take the example of login test. This is the run mode which will represent whether I have to run the test with login test with this data or not. Okay, if the run mode is yes, then Selenium will execute this type of test with this kind of data and this kind of username and password. Okay, and you'll also specify the browser. Okay, the browser is Mozilla. You need to execute this test on Mozilla, Chrome, I, whatever it is, and you will get the HTML report. But to reach this level, okay, to reach this level, first you need to understand following things. You need to understand test ng or J unit. Without that, it is impossible. Then you need to learn how to read Excel files. You need to read, you need to run Excel file operations. Fine. Then you need to learn all about WebDriver. Then you can do all this thing. Right now I'm talking about this thing all about WebDriver. I'll go over all these topics gradually as we proceed with the course. Okay. I know being tester, you have seen the scenarios wherein you want, you compare my teaching with that particular scenario, okay? It's not your mistake, you, you guys are experienced people, everybody is experienced, so you tend to relate it. But if you tend to relate it, then you will actually be a little confused out here. Because learning this thing takes a lot of time and it also takes small steps. So I am asking you to take small steps first, right? And learn the features of WebDriver first. Okay. Now, question being asked by Shraddha is, can you please once again tell how you add Selenium libraries in Eclipse? Okay, Shraddha, I'll tell you. You just have to right click on the project. Okay. 
Okay, go to the properties file, go to the Java build path option over here, right? And click on this button over here, add external jars. You can add the jar files from here. Be very sure that you add these two Selenium jar files and also the jar files under lib. Fine. Okay. Right. What is Maven and Hudson? Again, a question being asked by Srinivas is what is Maven and Hudson? Fine. Maven. Again, I answered this yesterday as well. Suppose five people are working on in your team. Okay, and everybody is using Selenium. Everybody is automating using Selenium. So you don't want that everybody should use different versions of jar files. For example, latest version of jar file is 2.25. Now you want that everybody in the team should be using the latest version of jar files. So you use Maven to actually get the latest version or whatever version of jar file is there to everybody's workspace. So that is basically Maven. That is a very layman definition of Maven. It, Maven is also used for build process. Okay. And what is Hudson? Uh, Hudson is an integration environment. Right. As soon as the build changes in Hudson, Selenium scripts, they automatically execute. Suppose the server. Okay, and the developer he does some change, he does some changes and all, and the build will changes. What happens is that we can put Selenium in Hudson, we can, we can integrate Selenium with Hudson. As soon as the build changes, without even Tesla coming into the picture, the scripts will automatically start executing. So that is basically Hudson. Jenkins also does the same thing, right? So. Fine. Okay. Question being asked by Priya is, do you have simple examples that can be referred to per concept? Yes, I have. Actually, I have them in the videos. Along with the course I told you, right, you'll be getting access to 80 plus hours of videos. I have them organized in the videos, actually. Okay, fine. Anything else from anybody? Any question? Right, so fine. So basically for next three to three and a half weeks, our basic motive is to learn WebDriver. Okay. Then we will start writing test cases. We will write test cases, we will parameterize them, we'll execute them on multiple browsers, we'll make a framework out of it. But first thing is learning WebDriver. Right? Because Selenium is very different from implementing test cases. For example, QTP. You open QTP, you record a script, you run it, QTP automatically generates reports, it does everything. If anybody has worked in QTP, he'll know that. But in Selenium, this is not the case. Selenium people, they, may, they, they, don't, they don't actually give you the uh, flexibility of generating reports. On, they don't give you a kind of framework where you can write the script and run on multiple browsers and all. So all you have to do yourself, they don't give you a feature with which you can read Excel files, right? But in a paid tool like QTP, you have all those features. So out here in Selenium, you need to first learn what those Selenium guys have given it to you. Then you have to learn Java and use the POI API or GXL API in Java to read Excel files and understand the concepts. Okay, fine. Now, uh, let's move forward. Right. Now I'm going to talk about something known as Firefox profiling. If you have noticed, I am running gmail.com, right? If I open up my Firefox browser and suppose I go to gmail.com, right? And I bookmark the page. I bookmark this page. So in bookmark, this particular page will be visible. Okay. But if I am running my gmail.java from here, if I am running this from here, then, okay, hold on, I need to run this in Firefox. If I run this in Firefox, you will observe that the window which Firefox opens it's actually got nothing inside it. 
even firebox is not present in that window even in the bookmarks you don't have the gmail bookmark it is a complete different firefox which is opening up okay this is this is because selenium launches a new firefox profile every time and it launches and it starts firefox anybody having any idea about firefox profile does anybody know about firefox profile what is profiling in firefox i think there are many people who don't know this concept of profiling is there anybody who knows about this uh, firefox profiling okay i'll tell you well uh, taking a very simple example suppose myself and my colleague we are sharing a common laptop i want that when i start my firefox i should see my set of settings in firefox my set of bookmarks fine and my colleague he wants that uh, when he starts firefox he should see his set of settings and he his set of bookmarks okay so it's like different instances of firefox running on the same machine fine so that is possible in firefox they have the feature this kind of feature is not there in i or chrome to you to avail that feature first of all go to your firefox and close it from file exit menu don't close it from the cross mark on the top right close it from the file exit okay once you have closed it you start your go to run menu and type firefox.exe hyphen p profile manager this is the command okay i'll give this command to everybody on the chat right so this is the default this is the kind of window you come up with this is the default profile which is there on your system i can create a new profile called say i create a new profile called ashish right click on finish so this is a new profile if i if if i open up this profile i will click on start firefox i'll see a fresh window opening up this is just like a newly installed firefox in your machine right so if you if you close it from file exit again and open this you will again get this window so whichever instance of firefox you can you want to open you can open i want to open default i can open or i can close it from here and open the instance called ashish and open from here now this instance ashish has got no firebug installed in it it's got no bookmarks it's a fresh instance if i again go to say google and i bookmark this google page yes yes priya you can have your own bookmarks and yes your colleague or your kid can have his own instances of firefox by this concept okay and you can actually bookmark this particular page google in this right and suppose i also install firebug okay i go to firebug over here and i click on add to firefox let me install firebug in this instance and with selenium i can tell selenium that okay fine go and open the profile called ashish with selenium so when firefox opens you will actually see firebug in your particular profile because many times what happens is that when you run the script hold on no there is no profiling in chrome and ie there is no profiling it's only there in firefox okay guys i got to know why this was not working i was not connected to high speed internet 